In less than six months, Nigeria records another jailbreak, this time in Imo State. And the presidency opines that Bishop Cooker's comment on President Buhari's treatment of repentant Boko Haram insurgents is ungodly. Well, this is Plus Politics, and I am Mary Anna Cohen. Barely six months after episodes of prison breaks rocked the nation in Edo, Ikoi, in Lagos, uh, and Ondo states, another happened in Imo state. The Oweri Correctional Center was attacked by suspected hoodlums, and hundreds of inmates were freed. The incident happened in the early hours of Easter Monday and was said to have lasted between 1 a.m. and 3 a.m. Is there a security problem that transcends that of terrorism and banditry in Nigeria? Well, joining us to have this conversation is Dennis Amakri, a security expert, and Alex Obunaya, a broadcast journalist. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for joining us. Good evening. Thank you very much. Good evening. Yeah. All right. I I'm going to start with you, Alex, because you are joining us from Oweri, and you are a journalist. Obviously, you have been um, following the story as it has continued to um, develop. So give us a clear picture. Walk us through what exactly transpired um, in Oweri last night or the early hours of this morning. We have videos, but of course, it's very difficult for us to have a clear picture of what happened. Yeah, yeah that's because um, the incident happened uh, late, very early this morning at about 2.15 a.m. Uh, um, that was when the incident happened. The uh, PRO of the prison facility uh, James Maduba told us or told me that this didn't happen at about 2.15 and for over one hour there was sporadic shooting and bombing in that um, area and um, just um, a few minutes ago I was with him on the phone he said that um, before the attack happened they had 1,881 inmates before the attack happened and after the attack they counted 42 inmates left. So if you if you do your math, so if you take away 42 from 1,000 and 1,881, you're looking at um, over 1,800 inmates uh, ran away or were freed by the hoodlums. One inmate died out of uh, suffocation or due to suffocation. Uh, that's the, the statistics that um, he gave me just some 10, 15 minutes ago before uh, this program um, started. So before now, he said that um, this is, like I said earlier, happened by 2.15 a.m. They were not expecting it. And the hoodlums also went to the nearby uh, Imo State Police Command and also caused some damage. And um, nothing happened. None of them were caught. But according to the police PPRO, um, what's the name again? Um, Ikoku Orlando, in their press release, uh, which was made available a short while ago, said that um, one of the vehicles the hoodlums came with uh, was um, uh, arrested, if you allow me to use, if you permit me to use that word. And so they want to use that vehicle to see if they can in any way uh, catch some of these culprits who perpetrated this attack. Hmm. 2,000 plus, if not 1,000 plus um, inmates escaped. Now, I made to understand that there are some yeah. of these prisoners that refused to run a a away um, was the other prisoners who, who escaped, um, according to the reports exactly. that we, we're gathering. Um, what will be done? I mean, did you, were you opportune to ask what would be done to these inmates that refused to run away? Uh, I'm sorry, Alex, I think we lost you. But let's move on to, um, let's go to Mr. Macri. Uh, Mr. Macri, I'm going to start by asking. These people marched through the city of Oweri at the early hours of the morning, and they were unchallenged. They, nobody stopped them. Of course, we know that in this country, there's always one roadblock, police checkpoints at different places. Why exactly were these men able to perpetrate the kind of dastardly acts that they did without any hindrance whatsoever? Well, I 
it's a really sorry sight. Uh, sorry to hear about this particular thing. Um, uh, from what I gathered, uh, some uh, intelligence was actually transmitted to the police and the uh, government about what is going to happen. And then, of course, it was very apparent they were singing there, right very close to the government house. And uh, nothing happened until they went and struck. And uh, nobody asked for a backup. Uh, because if the police was actually overwhelmed, they were burning down their police station, uh, the police headquarters. They would have called on the uh, military uh, garrison that was very close by, no busy, uh, which was about maybe 10 to 15 minutes. You know, and this was not done. And these guys had a field day uh, releasing people um, and then, of course, burning down the prison. I think there are more implications. There is a lot of implications about what has happened uh, last night um, to what we are even looking at for now. It makes me really wonder why Oweri, if not in most states in general, has become such a security mess lately. I mean, let's not forget about the bombardment that happened earlier this year where the governor's uh, head was uh, on the chopping board because you know a lot of people were... Um, against what he did. And, and we've had a series of other kinds of unrest. Why has it become such a security mess of late? Do you have any idea? I mean, I'm not, I, you're not the governor of the state, but you're a security person. Because all of these activities that have led up to this today didn't start overnight, did it? Well, the security situation, if you want to look at it holistically, you'll find out that... Um, we had this uh, problem in the north, uh, northeast, northwest. Many people believe that it will not get to the south or south-south. Right now, we're experiencing a situation in the southeast, and definitely it will move to the south-south. Uh, the governor of uh, Abia State has already declared a curfew uh, from 6 uh, p.m. till dawn. So these are the things, these are signs of the times. We have a serious security problem in this country. And then we are having all kinds of warlords, warlords that are coming up in different areas and declaring, misbehaving or should I say, trying to assert themselves. And of course, our police is weary and uh, thinly spread and uh, hitting on the police directly because the police themselves will not be able to stop them. So, like I said, we have something deeper in our plates right now that we need to look at. I'm going to come back to you because I want to talk about, I mean, there's a lot to unravel uh, from this story that developed early hours of this morning. But I want to go back to Alex, if we have Alex. Um, Alex, the same question I asked Mr. Mackey, I'm going to put it to you because you have been covering stories in your state. And, and like I mentioned, there was a bombardment uh, that was blamed on the government, that the government was trying to cause some form of unrest. But then there's two, ta two sides to the story where we heard that there was a training camp for so-called IPOB members, where these people were trained on commando-style kind of hits. So could we say that maybe this problem that we're, you're facing in your city could be an aftermath or an offshoot of all of the things that have been happening um, so far? No. no. Oh, dear. Uh, I think we're having a connection problem. Well, let's go back to you, Mr. Mankri. Um, I want to talk about the fact that these people were armed to the teeth so much that police officers ran away and they ran they took to their heels um and here we are again talking about arms and ammunition and we're talking about when we're talking about banditry in 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 the middle belt we're talking about um banditry in the north northeast we're talking about boko haram here we are again with these men on the streets of Uwiri, armed to the teeth and i'm not just talking about guns they had um, explosives, which they used on police on the police headquarters. So, our police officers are not even as armed as these people. So, it, it takes us back to the issue of proliferation of small arms and the fact that we have a, a 
a country saturated with arms and ammunition that has not been mopped up in any way. We hear about these mop-up exercises, but really, what are they mopping up? I don't think there is any mop-up exercise going on uh, because uh, it, it is done uh, light-heartedly, light-heartedly, because if there is a real mop-up, you cannot convince anybody when people are feeling unsafe to bring out their guns and surrender it. You know, so the basic issue there is that if you are serious about uh, mopping up, you 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 can do exchange money exchanging for guns. Uh, those are different types of uh, systems used in mopping up. Uh, you can use it uh, for amnesty, just like uh, it was done in the Niger Delta. And uh, there are many many ways of uh, mopping up, but. I don't think uh, the Nigerian police is ready to mop up any gun. Instead, uh, they are asking some people to mop up guns while some others are carrying AK 47 and moving around. And uh, you don't arrest those people. So I, I just can tell you this there are too many guns. The proliferation of guns in Nigeria is just too heavy. And uh, everybody is having it. And of course, we are sleeping. We are sleeping like you know a, 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 a vehicle without brakes down the hill. And then, of course, nothing is going on because this is a terrible indication. And all these things are trial trials that are going on. They, they attack a police station, uh, release uh, uh, people from prison, and then, of course, don't be don't be in doubt about it. Those people they are releasing from prison are going to be recruited, recruited into their group, you know. So these are the dangerous signals that are coming up at this time. It makes me really wonder, you just said something about, you know, trials. So these people are testing the waters, that's what you mean. Um, we, yeah. I remember very well, vividly, when we talked about the issue of the bandits, and I spoke with you, I spoke with Sheikh Gumi, it seems like these people, these perpetrators of violence, uh, kind of are taking advantage of the weakness of not just our security forces, but the weaknesses of our leadership in the country as it is. Um, but I keep asking the question, Nigeria is not at war. Why do we have so many guns coming into the country? This is a country where you're not allowed to carry a weapon without license. And, and, and we know how licenses are given. It's very difficult to get a license for a weapon to even carry. So really, are where, where are we going? Yeah, those guns you are seeing are unlicensed. Nobody, none of them have a license for them. And they are due to the proliferation of arms that are coming in from the north, from the west, and from the south-south into the country. And then, of course, um, nobody is actually uh, trying to stop it and uh, you have um, you have uh, ak-47 in the uh, people's hands look at those ak-47s they are very expensive at least half a million for one so these particular people you are looking at how do they buy them i don't think they bought them they were given these arms were given to them and I can go ahead and tell you, politicians gave it to them. Politicians. So we have a lack of governance. People who are more thinking of themselves, they are not patriotic. And then, of course, they are fueling a violent economy that we are running right now. Because I can tell you, there's a lot of money changing hands, you know, and either with non state actors. And even people in government where money is changing hands. I want to push you further before I go back to Alex. I think we have him on the phone now. I want to push you further because you have gone ahead to say that the politicians um, allegedly have bought these weapons and armed these people. What exactly do you think they're arming them for? Is somebody trying to Election. plan a war? Is somebody trying to topple a government? Why would politicians be arming um, and people to cause confusion and tension in a country where we really don't need it, especially when we know that we're already divided along the lines of ethnicity and religion. Why would we want to do that? Elections. Simple. They are arming 
these boys for elections. Some of these boys were armed during the last election. But the elections are 2023. Then, course, we're still in 2021. Say that again. We're in 2021. Why would anybody be arming people right now to cause mayhem when the elections are in 2023? I no, mean, no, no. I might no, be a no, novice no, no, about yeah. this, but please help me understand it. Yeah, let me, let me explain to you. Most of these people you see right now were armed during the last election. And after the elections, the politicians abandoned them. They're not taking care of them anymore. So these boys now resorted to kidnapping, banditry, and all kinds of things that they are doing to get money. Because they were giving money during the elections. Now the elections are over. And then, of course, they need money to survive. They need money to even sponsor their Boko Haram to fuel the Boko Haram insurgency. And then, of course, remember, we've started moving towards 2023. That's another election coming up. So these boys are still available. And I know Nigerian politicians, they have their boys. In fact, Nigerian politics have gone to the level where you don't run for election if you don't have boys in quotes you know and who are these boys thugs with guns carrying the ak-47 that are, were bought for them hmm. interesting let me come back to you alex because i'm interested in um the information that has been put out by the police of course we um got some sound bite from you earlier on when you were talking to the prison's pro uh, at the time they had not ascertained the number of people that were either um, um, the people that were freed from the prisons. And of course, we, we, at the time, we did not know if there were any casualties. But w what are they saying or who are they saying is responsible for this? Because I've heard all kinds of things. Some people have said it's IPUB members going to the prisons to free their people. Some people are saying that they're angry youths. And, and, and of course, the papers have said that they're masked um, armed men. Um, what are you hearing from the streets and, of course, from security agencies and all of the press briefings that you've listened to? Um, let, let's, let's go with the police PPRO, first PPRO, Frank Mba, in a press release that um, he, set, he sent down to us here. He said that um, ECN is responsible for the attack. Even though some persons on the streets of Owere would want to disagree, because how did they come about it? How do they know that it is uh, ECN of uh, members? I'm sorry, uh, what, what exactly Eastern is ECN? Network? For the benefit of those who are watching, what's ECN? The ECN is Eastern Security Network, the military arm of IPOB. Hmm. That's indigenous peoples of Biafra, mm -hmm. the proscribed group, of course. So but questions on the streets, on the lips of everybody in the world is, how did they come about that, um, that um, assertion? Who told them that it is ECN? But some will say that maybe they're just some aggrieved youths who... You know, don't forget that during the NSAS protest, police stations were touched in Wari. And um, there was an attempt to also attack this facility, but I think they got wind of it and beefed up security. So now they felt that these security guys have relaxed. And so that was when they came and hit them. Nobody knows, but if you go by what the police authorities are saying, I think then it's the ECI, the Eastern Security Network. Hmm. Again, um, on Saturday and on Sunday, it was reported that about seven Suya sellers uh, were attacked in Imo State. Again, um, leading up to what happened in the early hours of this morning, uh, do you think this is a retali retaliatory um, attempt on um, people from the north of this country? Is this a sectional war? What exactly do you think is going on? Well, I don't think it's um, a sectional war. I heard that report too. But I think I don't want to connect that attack to this one. Maybe it could just be a one-off thing or just a minor incident that occurred which led to the, the attack of the Suez Tellers. Uh, I, don't, I, don't, I don't believe that they are related. Hmm. Well, uh, I mean, I, I also like to ask, I mean, I've never lived in Imo State. I have visited a couple times. But why do you think it has become so unsafe and insecure over the past few months. What exactly do you think as a reporter who's been covering these stories, what do you think is the antecedent 
or the history of this recent state of insecurity? It, it baffles me, uh, Marianne, trust me, because I've also asked that question. I, I've lived in this state for going to about um, eight, nine years now. We've never had it this rough. It's been very peaceful. Yes, pockets of um, skirmishes here and there, but not as bad as it is recently or presently. It, it, it beats one's imagination. Why has Imo deteriorated to this level? Maybe the, the, the hunger in the land, unemployment, user anger, and of course, don't forget too. But that is the case everywhere in Nigeria. This youth unemployment in Cross River, in Akwaibo, in so many states of the country, you don't see the young people breaking into prisons and freeing prisoners. You don't see that kind of unrest. So really, yeah, that's but... an excuse that is weight, weighty enough. And I'm not in any way saying that we should disregard the fact that young people are um, not duly employed, but I'm saying, is that a good enough excuse for what has just happened? Well, no, it's not, of course. It's not a good enough excuse. The fact that you're unemployed doesn't mean that you should take up arms and um, attack police formations and other security facilities. No, not at all. But again, I, I think that um, the police have really angered the people. I, I still see this as an offshoot of the NSAR state. That they've really angered the people. And so they are taking this war back to them. And unfortunately, the police are not even prepared. OK, look at now. They've cordoned off everywhere, making it very, very, very difficult for you to a journey of maybe two minutes, three minutes. It will take you like 30 minutes or one hour. They've cordoned off everywhere, searching vehicles. What are they looking for? Mm. They ought to have beefed up security. They ought to have been prepared for this. They're not mm. causing heavy inconveniences on innocent emo lines. These guys are somewhere jubilating and rejoicing, and they're there making things uncomfortable for us. Hmm. They will do this after another two weeks, three weeks, they will relax. And these guys could hit them again another two months or three months. And if they will come back to this thing, it, so they really need to put their house in order. Okay. It, it's a shame that um, these guys took the fight to them, and from all indications, they seem to be winning. Back to you, Mr. Macri. This is obviously a hit to your constituency. I know that you're not actively in the service anymore, but of course, this is more like a blow to security agencies. And, and what Alexander is saying is that, you know, the police is not on, on their toes. They're not 10 steps ahead of these guys. And, and he's saying that all they're doing is mounting roadblocks and, you know, stop and searches. But this is not what needs to be done to deal with this issue. So I ask you, could this situation have been preempted or, or have been averted by both the federal and the state government uh, because this seems to be you know an aftermath of something bigger that had happened so knowing that these security issues are cropping up everywhere in the country could this have been averted and how would you have dealt with this and then going forward what needs to be done well i have to divide this into two because uh, it's very, very important for you to understand the undercurrents of what is going on. Firstly, now from open source intelligence, you can get what is going on. And uh, of course, it will tell you that um, uh, there is no love loss between the former governor of Imo State and the present governor of Imo State. Of course, some weeks back, you know what happened. You know, I remember all these guys have their boys, like I said. So these people have their own, you know, beef about each other on how to deal with each other. Secondly, we are now moving into a situation where um, the elections are coming and um, everybody is trying to uh, do one or two things. Uh, if you listen to what uh, even uh, Kano um, had said, he said that um, if people that were terrorists could be released, arrested, but released and rehabilitated, then why should other people remain in jail? Hmm. So... He must have ordered his boys, go there, open the jail, bring them out. They are free people. I remember, like I said earlier, that is another source of recruitment hmm. for them. So these are the undercurrents that are going on. 
you know, these are the undercurrents. The governor themselves, remember, the president have said that, look, governors, you are the ones on ground. You should start taking care of this issue. It's your business now. You don't wait for the federal government all the time. So the government, the governors on ground are the ones handling this, and they know the kind of problems that they are facing. So it, it takes, it behoves of them to come together and make sure that they solve the problem. Like I would say in Igbo State, you know, Okorocha and uh, Hope uh, should come together now, sit down, and for the sake of the state, try and solve this problem. Because if they keep on fighting and politicizing everything, their state will continue to burn. Okay. And All that's right. where we are. Well, I want to say thank you to you, um, Mr. Dennis Amakri. Uh, he's a security expert. Thank you very much for talking with us. And of course, Alexander Obunaya is a broadcast journalist who's joining us live from Uwiri. Thank you, gentlemen. We're hoping that some peace would be uh, returned to the state. Uh, we'll take a short break. Thank you for joining us on this conversation. We will come back and talk about the presidency and, of course, what they think of Bishop Cooper's most recent criticism of President Buhari. Stay with us. We'll be right back.